I want to welcome everyone to part one of how to build a log cabin. If you've ever performed a search on Google to learn more about log cabins or log homes, you probably discovered that one of the biggest inquiries is simply how to build a log cabin. Now I'm sure that some individuals performing this search are interested in the mechanics of hewing a log or creating the perfect corner notch on that log cabin. For those folks, I highly recommend visiting YouTube where they'll find many demonstrations on how to swing an axe without severing one of their limbs. But I believe that most of the online inquiries are made by individuals who dream of owning a log cabin and just don't know where to begin. These folks, and maybe you're one of them, want to acquire the perfect cabin. One that upon completion will leave you harboring no regrets in the choices that you've made or carrying any remorse for having gone through the process in the first place. A cabin built correctly should stand for centuries and will cost many thousands of dollars. Building a home is not a process to be rushed into. Over the years that I've been building, I have lost track of the number of people who have spoken to me about their regrets and the choices that they made when building their log home, mainly because they were not aware of the options outside of the log cabin kit world that were available to them. Before you ever enter into an architect's office, before you hire your builder, before you talk to a log cabin supplier, you need to determine for yourself exactly what you want. What is your vision of your dream home? I've also had many individuals approach me desiring to share their remorse over the fact that they had always dreamed of having a log cabin, but they now found that the years had slipped by and that the dream was no longer attainable. I firmly believe that it is much easier of a task to build a log cabin than it is to live with the regret of never having done so. I can think of no words to comfort those who tell me these heartbreaking tales other than it's never too late. I'd like your log cabin story to be different. I'd like it to be a tale ending with the classic line, and they lived happily ever after. So let's get started, shall we? There are several reasons why people never get around to achieving their cabin in the woods. One of them is simply cost. Many can't afford or choose not to pay the additional premium that most cabins cost above that of a standard home. I'll get into cost in a future article. But for now, a large price tag on a log cabin is a relatively easy problem to get around by simply learning the process of building a cabin and then pitching in as much as possible or as much as you want with its building process and or its construction oversight. I believe that anyone can achieve a log cabin within their budget, whatever that budget is, but, and there's always a but it seems, if your budget is lean, you might not be able to get all the bells and whistles found in the cabins that you've seen featured in magazines. One final point on cost savings for now. Start small, think small. You can always add on later. It's a simple fact that log cabins are extremely labor intensive. The more labor you provide, the lower the cost. The log cabins of our ancestors often cost very little, if anything, as they did most of the work in building their own home. One point I'd like to emphasize at this point is that building a log cabin is fun. Upon completion, you will remember this period of your life as one of its most memorable. I enjoyed building my first cabin so much so that I ended up put making a career out of it. So I must ask you, why would you consider paying someone else to have all that fun? I do my best to encourage people to keep in mind that a log cabin should not be considered an expense and that log cabins should not be viewed as luxury items. Rather, they are investments. Built correctly, 
there will be rewards well beyond the joys of actually building the cabin and in the enjoyment that one receives in the finished home. There is also the financial returns that will be received upon its eventual sale. Of course, many people opt to never sell. Rather, they choose to pass their cabins on down through their family as a living legacy. The rewards of such a gifting is something that I wouldn't know how to measure. How much would you treasure a cabin that was built by your great-grandfather and was gifted to you? Okay, let's get back to the basic question. How to build a log cabin. The secret to building a log cabin is by taking this process one step at a time. The whole process viewed as one whole unit can seem overwhelming, but one step at a time is what you need to do. And the first step in this process is the most important. You need a clear vision of that dream cabin of yours. In life, it doesn't matter what your goal is, whether building a log cabin, losing weight, or getting a degree. Without a clear vision of your completed goal, you will not reach it. Likely, you won't even ever start the process, and if you do, you'll likely end up falling short or being greatly disappointed with the final result. The first step you need in getting your cabin is to get diagrams, plans, even photos of exactly the cabin that you want. It's at this point, once the vision is in your mind and it's in your hand, that you are in the driver's seat. From there, you go on to learning what needs to be done to convert that vision into reality. From that point, you will then seek out the materials that you'll need to fulfill your expectations. You will not be in an uncomfortable position of needing others who will attempt to tell you what they think you should have. All one needs to do is to set a clear image of what you want in your mind, add in a healthy dose of action, and then stand back as the vision becomes reality. I often tell people that a set of plans is like a treasure map. If it's a good one, it will lead to great joy. If it's a bad one, then you're lost. So let's refresh. If you want a cabin, figure out exactly what you want and then commit to the process. Take the first step. By the way, let me introduce myself. I'm, I'm Noah Bradley, sometimes referred to as the Log Cabin Man. And I'd like to help you build the log home of your dreams. A home that once completed will bring you and yours years of enjoyment. A cabin that will become a lasting legacy. One that future and generations will admire. I've spent my whole life building handmade houses. Over half of these unique homes have been log cabins. And every one of these cabins holds a special place in my heart. Almost all of them have been so greatly admired and received that they've been featured in well-known publications, including books, magazines, newspapers, and popular websites, such as the Washington Post, Country Living Magazine, Log Home Living, Hands-On Log Homes, American Farmhouses, Porch, Countryside, the list goes on and on. All told, I've designed and built nearly a hundred cabins in addition, I've restored or repaired hundreds more, and I've likely viewed in person well over a thousand of these precious structures. As a result, I really know log cabins, like few others can honestly claim. I've built log cabins from scratch with the aid of nothing more than an axe and a selection of standing trees. Trust me, a lot of physically demanding work goes into a structure like that. On the opposite end of the spectrum, I once built a log cabin from a kit home package. Just once. Something I doubt if I'll ever repeat again. I was so disappointed with the product and the end result. Primarily, though, my cabins have been built using old antique logs salvaged from structures that were in jeopardy of being lost through neglect or destruction. Regardless of which of these paths you might take in getting your logs, there's a great deal of wisdom that I can pass on to you that will go a long way in helping you gain the home of your dreams 
and avoid some huge mistakes in the process. I've reached that point in my career where I'd like to share what I've learned about cabins with a broader audience, and I've been doing just that this past year. Maybe you follow me on Facebook, or perhaps you regularly visit my website, handmadehouses.com, where you can find daily postings containing tons of free information, unique photos, and encouraging inspiration to help you keep focused on your goal of having a home that you can take pride in. If you haven't visited one of these sites or signed up to Facebook, I invite you to do so. And while you're there, consider signing on at handmadehouses.com to receive more free resources. I am a class A builder who studied engineering in college. I've drawn 95% of the plans that I have used to build cabins over my 25 plus years of building. My cabins are gorgeous and it's not because I'm some creative genius. It's because I believe the homes and cabins built prior to the 1900s are the most attractive homes ever built. I pay attention to the details and dimensions that make these homes special and then I carry them through on my drawings. I also learn from my mistakes and the mistakes of others and I pay attention to my clients comments after spending years living in the cabins that I have built. I hand draw all of my plans with pencil and paper. I find that most CAD drawings are filled with much more information than I need, much of which is conflicting or in error. What I need when I build is a set of plans with basic dimensions and an artistic image of what I'm going to build. If I find the cabin visually striking on paper, on all of its elevations, not just the front profile, then I know that I will love the house upon completion. There are three major flaws with most home designs today. One is that they focus on the floor plans exclusively, which is the layout of the rooms, and they don't give enough focus, or sometimes any, to the elevations and that is the, what the house looks like on the outside. I've seen more than my share of the work of designers who start with the floor plans and then will later on resolve exterior issues. This method is just so wrong. A home should be designed so that it invites admiration long before it is entered. If a house is large enough, it can be divided into individual rooms in such a way to please its owners after the elevations are completed. Second major flaw in so many home designs is the focus on making the front of the house as attractive as possible by creating faux roof lines and then the rest of the home is no given no attention at all. This creates the illusion of an attractive home when viewed from the plans and in the sales brochure and listings but the reality is that we so seldom stand directly in front of our homes and we often wonder why homes today are so visually unappealing. Finally, the third major flaw in most log cabin plans, I believe that the most attractive cabins were built over a hundred years ago. Most of the new designs of today are either ugly or will be outdated very quickly as fashions and taste change. I encourage you to make a journey to Colonial Williamsburg. Walk the streets there. You will find yourself amazed at how these homes that were built there over 200 years ago are still to this day strikingly attractive. And then afterwards, I encourage you to take a drive through a couple of subdivisions, a new one and one that's say 50 years old and see how they compare to the ones you saw at Williamsburg. I encourage you to build a home that will be as attractive or maybe even more attractive a hundred years after you build it as it was the day you finished it. And the only way to be sure that this will happen is to go with a design that has proven its ability to be timeless. During my years as a builder, I offered my design services only to clients who hired me to build their homes always at a bargain price, typically around $2,000. 
which was much lower than the national average cost of architectural plans, which I believe is currently around $5,000. I once worked on one particular log cabin project where the architect charged a fee of 33% of the total cost of the project. Ouch! Next up in my series here on how to build a log cabin, I'll go into some foundational concepts to help you design your dream cabin, full of ideas and secrets that I have learned over my years in building cabins. Design options that you will find nowhere else, ones that will make your cabin more attractive, more functional, and yes, cost less. In the meantime, I will be regularly releasing my classic blueprints, one at a time, that you can easily download and use on your own project at a price you won't be able to turn down. So until next time, thank you for joining in. This is Noah Bradley.